Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we look through hundreds of online poker vlog hands to bring you 10 of the best. And this week, week two, January 2022, you are in for a treat. We've got great walls of chips, we've got people doing the happy dance inside, and at number one, this is a hand you do not want to miss. So let's get started. And number 10 this week is Wolfgang Poker. He's playing 1-3 at the Beau Rivage in Biloxi, Mississippi. And take a look at this one. Who else is folding in this spot? Next hand I note, I look down at Pocket Kings, the Cowboys, and I raise it up to $15 from the hijack. Five players put in the calls, going six ways to the flop, which is pretty connected. It comes seven, six, five, rainbow. When the action checks to me, I go for a bet here for $35. Once again, I think I went too small. I need to be betting around $50 to price out some players on any draws. My player on my left now raises it up to $105. And once again, we get a cold call from the small blind. Unlike the last hand though, I think my hand is just too strong to fold to one raise. So. I put in the additional $70 and we're off to the turn. When the turn comes, the queen of hearts shouldn't really change too much. The action checks over to the cutoff who now rips it all in for $175. When the small blind calls as well, alarm bells are going off in my head. Sure, I do have an over pair, but we could be behind any combination of 7, 5, 6, 7. And even if we make a correct call here and we're ahead, the opponent could have a hand like 7, 8 and river us. So I just decide that since there's two players that are showing aptitude to liking this hand, I'm I'm gonna let go of my overpair here and make another exploitative fold back to back folds here what do you guys think about that the river comes the deuce of clubs really doesn't change anything please someone show me a good hand sure enough the cutoff turns over six seven offsuit he flopped two pair great fold again from me and a small blind mucks his cards making good folds is just like printing money we made two great folds we're still up thirteen hundred dollars on the session at number nine is ashley sleaf She's playing 2-5 at the win in Vegas. And Ashley, we feel for you. Every day's a school day, huh? So my lady villain from earlier who made it 30 in the cutoff limps this time from the low jack. I'm in the hijack with ace jack offsuit. Might be a little loose, but I made it 25. Button calls, same guy who's been in a ton of hands. She calls as well. So I got the two players that are playing the widest range of hands in the pot with me, feeling decent about it. Flop comes down, queen four deuce with two clubs. Remember, I have the ace of clubs. When it checks to me, I decide to bet 35. Like I said, they both have really wide ranges. They don't really necessarily need to hit this flop that often. I have the ace of clubs, I'm going for it. But they both come along. All three of us see the turn comes the seven of clubs. So front door flush gets there, but I have that key card. I got the ace of clubs. When low jack lady villain checks to me, I bet 125. I'm gonna size way up on this turn because I wanna be probably pretty polar when I bet this turn in a three-way pot. Button folds and Chica and the low jack comes along. The river is an offsuit king. So now I'm trying to think about what she has. If she's calling that huge bet on the turn, she either has a queen or she has a flush, but she can't have enough flush because I got these clubs. And so on the king, I think, all right, should I be bluffing this? I don't know. I don't know if I can get her to fold a worse flush and I'm not really in the business of trying to get her to fold a worse flush, but I definitely can get her off of a queen. So I go for it because pre-flop, I'm probably not gonna raise ace 10 off over her limp. In those positions, it was just too early of positions. So this is literally the worst offsuit ace I have. And I have the ace of clubs. So the other offsuit aces now made a pair. Ace, queen, ace, king, both made a pair. So definitely would check back this river with those hands. So this is literally my only offsuit ace. So I decided to go for it. I bet 350. And before I can even get my stupid bet across the line, she just tosses in her chips. Yeah, I bow my head in shame. And you know, I think I make one of the biggest mistakes of the whole hand and I muck my freaking hand out of embarrassment. I muck my hand, I didn't flip it over and that cost me all the information that I basically just paid for, even though it was in a bluff form. I just paid for that information. I didn't flip over my hand. Um, I was just like, 
kind of like shell shocked because she she just called me so quickly, and I just made a huge mistake by by mucking my hand. I didn't get to see what she had because it makes a big difference whether she's calling me with you know a king high flush or if she snap calls me with just you know one pair. So I really really needed to flip my hand over to get that info for the rest of the session. Huge mistake and lesson for all of you guys out there. Don't be embarrassed about your bluffs. Just flip them over. At number eight, close to broke is playing 2-5 at the Hustler in California. And the poker's interesting, but I was completely distracted by seat five, building what can only be described as the Great Wall of Chips. Early position limps, another player at limps as well. It gets over to me on the button. I'm going to go ahead and isolate here. There is a straddle on to this hand, which is $10. I make it $55 with Jack-10 offsuit. A little bit on the looser side, I'd like for this to be suited, but in reality, I don't really mind. These players are pretty loose, like I said, pre-flop, and they're playing extremely passive. They are just not really... Yeah. Anyways, we're off to a flop that's king, 10, 8 with two clubs and one heart. Checks over to me. I'm going to go and see bet $65. The opponent decides to call, and we're off to a turn. The turn comes the ace of hearts. When he checks over to me, this is just a great card for my range and a decent card for my hand. We now pick up a gut shot if we need to suck out on any one pair holdings, which is most likely what our opponent has. So I'm going to go ahead and bet $200, size up a little bit here to get, again, some better hands to fold and any drawing hands to call and I guess give us a little bit extra value. Anyways, my opponent decides to make the call and we're off to the river. The river comes a six of clubs, bringing the front door flush. My opponent snap jams all in for $600. I mean, like immediately snap jam. And you're asking yourself, Kieran, why haven't you thrown your cars away yet? And it's because I just don't even know what the heck this guy's repping. It seems obvious that, okay, he has a flush, but there is just something to be said about timing tells. Look, our opponent instantly jammed. I mean, I don't even think he got a chance to see what the river was. He just instantly jammed and when that happens almost always the player is bluffing he's trying to show you that he's just i'm so strong i've got all this bravado i i got a big hand and you know you guys have all been there before you guys see this it happens all the time and i don't know i just feel like that's just constantly what's kind of infesting my mind at this point in this hand is that look this guy just doesn't have as good of a hand as he's proclaiming or acting like he does and if that's the case, um, even though my hands got awful, there's a couple things that are important to note. Look, I have a great removal from his value hands. So his hands like queen jack, his hands like flush draws. I actually block both of those hands. So I just, what is he repping? What is this guy repping? I don't know. And uh, besides, I guess, seven, nine that gets from the river. And even then, he didn't wait for the hand to come out. I just don't know what the guy has. So... After all that being said, I end up tossing in the call with probably one of the worst hands I guess I'm going to have in this spot. But again, the blockers are so relevant to me. My opponent says good call, but shows ace deuce. So obviously he was bluffing with the worst hand. He did have the ace of clubs. So it's unfortunate for us that we end up calling a bluff and it was still better than us. And that's just the sickest part of our hand is that even when that's the case, we're just going to be beat sometimes. So it is what it is. Unfortunate for us. Good play by him, I guess. I, I don't know. He was blown away that he was good, and I guess so was I. But I guess that's the trouble with this hand. This is a perfect 10 and a perfect example of, like, we just don't even beat a lot of things, and uh, it is what it is. Unfortunate way to start off the new year. At number seven, Yale Greenfield is at the bike in Bell Gardens, California. He's playing 5-10. And what else to say? Bingo, bango, bongo. Let me set the scene for you here a little bit. We now have two Spanish pros at our table. They sat down at the same exact time and each bought in for $11,000. Spaniard one in cutoff opens to $75. Spaniard two calls the button. We've got two kings in the big blind. We make it $380 to go. Great. Spaniard 1 announces raise. He wants to play for more, $1,000 total. Spaniard 2 folds the button, and now it's back on us. 
So I think the options here are all in or to play a call and just proceed in this exact spot. I'm typically going to play calls. So when I'm considering my options, I'm leaning that way. I do go ahead and put in the call. At this point, both of us are representing extremely strong hands, and we need some YouTube heat to win this one. So please hit that subscribe button to help me hit this flop. And when the flop comes down, King 7-2 top set for us. It's the one time I'm actually hoping the opponent might have pocket aces, because that's how we're gonna get paid here. So I check it over to the pre-flop for better. He bets $525 into $2,100. And I like his size, I like his bet. I think it's a very good play. Now again, I think my two options here are proceed with call or go all in. I don't really see anything in between. And on this disconnected King 7-2 texture, I think the best thing to do is probably just call. When we get a nine turn, I quickly check it over to our European opponent, and he goes pretty deep in the tank here. There's $1,940 behind. If he's got hands like ace, queen of hearts, he might want to bluff, hoping that I fold. If he's got a hand like ace, king, he could think about also going all in, maybe checking. I don't know, there's a lot of options here, but there isn't a ton of money behind. He does check it back, and we're off to a river. River pairs the seven, so we now have kings full. Again, it's really fun to be in one of those spots where you hope that your opponent has aces. So rare that you ever have pocket kings and you hope the opponent has aces. I think hands like queens and jacks are gonna have a really hard time calling a bet here. Oh. We go rip city all in 1940, he snap calls. We show him top full and he shows us two aces. So he did not actually have the ace of hearts in hand. Extremely unlucky for him. But at the same time, this hand just sort of plays itself. If I was on his side, I would have lost in the same exact fashion he did. But it's a 7K pot for us. One of the biggest we've ever won in the history of this vlog. In a number six, Lexo is at the Hustler in California playing a 1-2 cash game. And will someone please bet? Two hours and 20 minutes into our session, we look down at ace 10 of diamonds, six dollars straddle on. I raise it up to twenty dollars from under the gun plus one, end up getting three callers. So we're four ways to the flop queen, jack, four, all diamonds. We flop the nut flush with a gut shot to a royal flush. What was honestly going through my head at this point was not winning a big pot, but just trying to make a royal flush. I've only made one other royal flush in the last four years of playing poker, so I slow play here, looking to see a turn in a river, seeing if I can hit that king of diamonds. Action checks all the way around, and we see the king of diamonds on the turn. We make a royal flush. A royal flush, guys, on the vlog at my meetup game, the best possible hand you can have in poker. The action checks to me on this turn card and I think it's a close spot whether I should bet or fold and honestly, I decide to fold, just kidding. I already used that joke earlier, but I'm not joking. We really do have a royal flush. I decided to just check this turn card, trying to let someone catch up or maybe bluff. We go four ways to the last card, three of diamonds. Now there's five diamonds on the board. Somebody do something. Someone put some money in the pot. It checks to me for a third time, and I decide to put out a small bet of $35. Nobody seems interested. They all fold, but we gotta show this one. I have a flush. <laughs> wow. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's a royal. 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 That's my second or third royal ever. Wow. Alex. Not bad, huh? Not good. Wow. Somebody go all in. Somebody, come on, no. Cover the whole board. Yeah, yeah. 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 I call, I call. I flush it. My second ever Royal Flush is on the vlog at my meetup game. Doesn't get too much better than that. At number five, Rob Rickerman is at the lodge down in Austin, Texas. He's playing 2-5. And you might look cool, calm, and collected on the outside, but we know you're doing the happy dance inside. Back to the two card game. Speaking of pocket tens, we pick them up for middle position. $10 straddle is back on the button. Under the gun player limps. Player on my right limps. I raise to 50. Folds back to the player on my right who makes the call. He's got about 1,000 in his stack. We're heads up to a flop that I believe Andrew Nimi would call favorable. 10-10-3, we flop quads, we are just running ridiculous right now. 
Opponent checks to me. I obviously check back. Turn is an ace of clubs. Opponent checks his cards for clubs, likes what he sees. He puts out a small bet of 35. Definitely just calling here, hoping he improves his hand, and I also want to keep his bluffs in. River is a six of hearts. Blank. He bets 105 now. I'm wondering how much he would call with an ace here. Um, I want to appear like I'm bluffing, so I go for bigger sizing and raise to 375. He thinks for about 15 seconds and does make a nice lay down. I show him the quads. We're running ridiculous in both games. Poker is fun. At number four, Harry B is at the best bet in Jacksonville, Florida, playing 2-5. And if this isn't a lesson on how to induce a river call, I don't know what is. This is actually one of the most eventful hands of the night, and it is within the first orbit. Eddie is in the plus one and opens it up to 50. Chips ahoy in the plus two calls. I have pocket four, so I'm going to call with the Rampage special. Hopefully I can make something happen. We see a few more calls from the player in the four seat, the player in the seven seat, and then also the player in the eight seat. So once again, as you guys can see, there is going to be a lot of ballooned pots in this game. And so far, a reoccurring theme that I'm noticing is a lot of just calling, not a lot of three betting and four betting. We're off to see a flop six ways where we flop bottom set. The flop comes out 10, eight, four, and this is probably one of the best situations you can ask for. Multi-way and a balloon pot. Action checks over to the player directly to my right, and he decides to throw out a bet on the smaller side, especially multi-way. He throws out a bet to the tune of $130. Multi-way, this should almost always be a raise, but I do want to have some players involved with marginal holdings as I do see a lot of overcalling so far in this game. So I just make the call, and this is exactly what happens as we do see two calls behind me from the player in the four seat, and then we also see the initial aggressor, Eddie, decides to tag along as well. The trap is working. Hopefully we can see a good turn that we can allow us to pile some more money in, and fortunately for us, that is exactly what we get. We see the 10 of spades on the turn, literally the best possible card in the deck. Uh, maybe another four, but regardless, this turn is excellent. Unfortunately, action does check it to me though, so now I do need to be putting some money in this pot. As for sizing, I think I can either go small or around half pot here. The merits of going small will allow some naked ace of spades to continue. Obviously, any 10 and any flush is certainly going to continue, but once again, I believe a 10 and a flush will still continue if I bet almost any sizing. At the end of the day, I don't think you can go wrong with either bet, but I do ultimately elect to do a smaller sizing. I like to bet a little bit less than a third of the pot. I throw out $250, once again, targeting all the holdings that I mentioned prior, knowing that we certainly do have the best hand, and we definitely want to get called. Luckily for us, we don't have any sweat and we do get action immediately as the player directly to my left makes the call and the other two players decide to get out of the way. So we're off to see a river heads up, which comes another spade. The river is a deuce of spades. So it's a bit of an interesting spot. If he had a 10 in his hand, he obviously hates this card as now any spade is going to be beating him. But if he does have a hand such as like the ace of spades with the king of spades, maybe accompanied by a 10, he's going to be calling a very large bet. So at this point... I decided to just try to go for the max. Continues on the turn, has gotten there, or so perceived have gotten there. Wow, it's an all in Hell from yeah. Harry. That's exactly what you do there. At this point, there's not much to do other than pray that we get called. And uh, sure enough, he does go well into the tank. At this point, I'm kind of regretting the bet sizing because once again, I was trying to target a ace or maybe a king of spades. But once he starts tanking, I'm almost always putting him on a 10, which most likely cannot call this bet. I try not to give off too much information by looking to the side. And as you can see, all he has now is a seven high flush. So, I mean, obviously this bet most likely is not gonna work, but uh, wait, uh, what's he doing? Is, is he grabbing chip? It, the chips get slid into the middle and we show our full house. We go ahead and scrape in a $3,400 pot within the first orbit. And we're into the top three for week two. At number three, Mariano is at the bike in California, and he's playing in a 2550 cash game. Take a look at this pot. It is bigger than most people's annual salary. Action falls to the small blind Danny, who makes it 400. Lynn calls in the big blind, and I complete in the straddle with 6-3 suited. The flop is amazing. 7-5-4, giving me the second best possible hand. 
Danny seems to like it too, though, as he continues with a bet of $1,200, and then Lynn calls the $1,200. Now it's my turn, and with so many draws available, I'm going to raise. I make it one pink chip, which is $5,000. Danny thinks it over for a while and eventually calls, and then Lynn takes her time before also calling. Suddenly, this pot has ballooned to $16,000, and we're barely at the turn, which is about as clean as it gets, the queen of clubs. They both check it over to me, and I'm for sure going to bet again. But in spots where it's difficult to be bluffing, I don't really like sizing up, so I make it $6,000. Now it's back on Danny. Notice he's got around $50,000, which is way more than me. So you can imagine my surprise when he announces all in. Holy shit. Seriously? Lynn gets out of the way, and suddenly I have quite the decision to make. Of course, my hand is way too strong to fold, but let's just pause for a second. Doesn't it seem obvious that I could have 8-6, or even Lynn could be trapping with 8-6? I feel like those are both very possible, which leads me to believe that Danny is most likely not bluffing. It just seems like such an insane spot to try it, at least to me. However, my hand is just too strong, and I guess even though he could have 8-6, he could also be jamming with a set, maybe, so... If it's my time to die, so be it. I make the call, and suddenly we are playing an $83,000 pot with one card to come. My opponent asked to run it twice. As per usual, I don't really care, so I oblige. And this is a massive, massive pot. First half of it is going to go to Mariano. Second half is going to go to Danny as he makes diamonds, and they're going to chop up. An $83,000 pot, the biggest pot of the night here on Live at the Bike. Wow. Long story short, we're chopping it up against Ace Deuce of Diamonds. Honestly, I was quite surprised that he actually was bluffing, but I gotta admit, it's pretty ballsy, so nice hand, man. And number two, Branson is at the Rounders Club in San Antonio, Texas. He's playing a 1 2 game, and is it just me? Does everybody really have a favorite hand? Okay, so this next one I have Jack King off in the low jack. There's another $10 button straddle, so I open to 35. It folds to the blinds who both say they're only playing because they have their favorite hands. Everyone's justifying, everyone's justifying play. What's up guys? <laughs> When they show the garbage, at least it's their favorite hand. <laughs> the small blind, big blind, button, and I see a flop that comes queen, ten, six, rainbow. I have an open-ended straight draw, so when the blinds check to me, I bet $90. The button folds, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. The turn is the six of hearts, and they check to me. When they call my bet on the flop, Either one of them could have a six or a queen, so I decide to check back and realize my equity. The river comes, the nine of hearts, giving me the straight, but also completing the backdoor flush. Here's where the hand gets interesting. The small blind bets $50, which is less than an eighth of the pot, a non-bet. Yeah, he threw chips in, but they might as well have been Pringles. It looks to me like he's trying to block bet with a pair or a six at very best. And now the big blind raises to $200. This is still less than half of the pot, and I think. The only full house I see him having is 6-9. <laughs> Maybe that's his favorite hand. Um, since he called $90 on the flop, the only flushes I see him having are Queen X of Hearts and really only bad ones since he made such a fuss about only playing this hand because it's his favorite. Uh, he could also have 7 8 of hearts or jack 8 of hearts. I think he could have a straight and I think he pretty much has every 6 here. I only have $324 left in my stack so if I shove I don't think the big blind will fold any 6 or lower straight for that price. I shove, then the small blind calls. And then the big blind calls, the small blind shows four six of diamonds, and the big blind shows three five of hearts. <laughs> he called $90 on the flop with three five of hearts. 
uh, <laughs> I, I'm shocked. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's his favorite hand, guys. And at number one, we're back at the bike with Mariano in that 2550 No Limit Hold'em cash game. And, um, what? What? This, people. This hand is why we run this channel. In the next one, I open Queen 9 on the button to 300 and get called by just the straddler. Flop comes 986, giving me top pair, but when he checks it over to me, I decide to check it back since this board is a little dicey. Turn is the Queen of Diamonds, and now he leads for $550. I can't really raise here after not betting on the flop, so I make the call, and we see the Jack of Clubs on the river. Obviously a terrible card, as any 10 now makes a straight, and to make things worse, my opponent now bets $1,250. Once again, a close spot. My hand could very easily not be the winner, but at the same time, he could be bluffing with a ton of stuff once I show weakness on the flop. So again, after some deliberation, I decide on a call. Interestingly enough, however, my opponent says good call and mucks his hand. I didn't know it at the time, but the graphics are showing he had a straight. So either he misread the board or the cards didn't pick up properly. I don't know. Either way, the pot was pushed in my direction, and I'm not complaining. <laughs> Sam was bluffing with with a straight. Missed that he had a straight, apparently. And Mariano's going to win this one. Weird. So that's it, folks. And yep, we don't know either. Such fun. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you all next week for another 10 of the best. Good luck at the felt.